Well, boy, howdy, boys and girls, men and women of all ages and walks of life. Welcome once again to the build inside the garage. We're going to do a couple little things here today. I know I've been absent quite a bit lately, and there's uh, reasons for that. But anyways, guys, um, we're getting back to it. First, we're going to do something real simple. We're going to put my uh, decal on my, my Ibanez headstock here. Now, I've done this before in another video, but you know, I've got a lot of new subscribers. Well, not a lot, but I've got quite a few new ones since I've done that. I thought it might be interesting for you guys. You just put the decal, it's just like a model car decal. You just put it in a little bit of water, let it dissolve for a little bit, put it on here, place it, and then squeegee it out, basically. But being very delicate, because this is really thin. I've been lucky, I've only messed up about three of these. And I had a sheet of uh, 18 or 20 of them. Anyways, I got a whole new bag of them. That means I should be building some more guitars. Anyways, guys, let's just get right to, right to it. Right to it. Let's get right to it. I hope you're having a wonderful and a blessed day. I just got a brand new loop over there. I think it's number 83 for your listening and dining pleasure, of course. Once again, I hope you had a great holiday season. We just had the last folks leave that came up to visit uh, last, uh, last Sunday. So we've had people here since almost since Thanksgiving. Anyways, that's why it's been a little slow, but it's been a lot of fun. Anyways, guys, let's get to it. We're gonna drop this puppy in this uh, wonderful water. Just let it sit there for a while. Anyways, what are you guys doing? Well, you know, and I did have to tack rag this off. We need to do that to make sure there's nothing on here that's gonna, you know, have something to do underneath it, so. A little bit of a waiting process, but you can usually uh, figure it out pretty quickly once you... There it is. Uh-oh. Well, I don't know if I can say that or not. Hey guys, I messed that one up. I can't believe it. See these things happen in guitar building. We best get ourselves another one out. See, you know, all things that happen on YouTube are not perfect. Here's my other one. Got her in there. Got him in there, I mean. <laughs> There's a very special one in here still to be installed on something else coming down the pipe. Well, let's see if I can do this for you guys and not mess it up this time. All right, I think we're gonna get it this time. Boy, this is gonna be another one of those ones where it's really, really dark. That's the only bad thing about uh, this set of this kind of this color, I should say, not the kind, the color. Um, it almost disappears on anything dark. That's what happened on my uh, SG copy and a couple others. I mean, you can see it, but isn't super apparent. Yeah, you just wanna try your best to get all this water out from underneath it, gingerly. <laughs> Sometimes you just pat it. Yeah, boy, that just about disappears, doesn't it? A 
Let's shine one of our little lights on it. I guess that's a pretty good placement. What do you think? I think it'll work. Yeah, boy, without a light on it, though, it just... Not super apparent. All right, let's get a little rag. And do what they call burnishing, just a little bit. And we'll set this guy aside to dry. Yeah, this guitar building stuff, I'll tell you. It can be a little bit tedious once in a while. It's like that sparkly guitar I have. I still haven't figured that out. Can you believe it? Going on my fourth time of taking it completely back apart. Once again, the switch is out of it. I don't know what I'm going to do with it. I hope I don't have to take it to a professional in the long run. Not because I... First, because I'm a cheapo guy. I don't like to pay the high price of a... Of a, of a professional. Another is, is because I want to figure out how to fix it. <laughs> I've, I've had problems before, but not like that one. All right, guys. Once again, we'll look at it and we'll set it aside. And we're going to mix up a little more uh, true oil for this puppy. Do some puppy mixing. I'm really trying to get this guy done. I got a brand new bottle of true oil. I had to do that because my last one was starting to uh, kind of congeal. It's kind of like when uh, honey turns back into more of a solid and what it does is there's little chunks of it and they don't want to you can't grind them in to the finish uh, they just leave this ugly looking chunk there you can't fix that so we're going to do our best today to get some new oil on here see how it turns out and then after this coat I think after this coat, we're going to um, we're going to be able to start thinning it out. You know, I got to You may not see this, but I'm going to show this to you. You see that little guy on there, that little sparkly guy? That's a piece of true oil that's hardened, and that's what I was having a problem with because this true oil I have has gone through a you know season or two, and it's just starting to just like honey. It's just kind of starting to congeal a little bit. We don't want that going on. Anyways, guys, I hope you're having fun today. <laughs> I am going to do some playing here real soon and a couple demonstrations because I've got uh, some things in line that I've had in line for quite a while that you've been waiting on. I hate to let my peeps down. And uh, I've got a couple things that I want to show you, do a little demonstration. Yeah, that's a lot better. Anyways, you know, you don't want to get too wild with this stuff. You don't need tons of it. I put a lot on here. This is, uh, like I said, this is a lot of coats. Maybe 30, maybe more. And you got to be careful not to just dump too much on there because it, like like anything that's thin, it'll run and pool up. You don't want that. Okay. A little tiny bit more. Boy, this is much nicer than the others, what it was before.
I like these oil finishes. Uh, they may not be for everybody, but you know, there's a couple kind of nice advantages to true oil finishes. One is that it can be repaired pretty easily. What I mean by that is, you know, when you paint something, you're pretty much stuck with that. You can repaint it and you can repair it, but not quite as easily as this stuff. You can really repair this stuff quite easily. You just kind of rub it on in there, you know? You don't have to have a, you know, you don't have to have a, you don't have to have a special paint booth or anything like that. Like my little paint booth that I have, you don't have to have that when using true oil. You just put it on there. No spray guns, no muss, no fuss. Just like those 50s and 60s commercials. No, no muss, no fuss. Anyways, guys, that's what we're doing today. I try not to do too much of this kind of stuff because it might be kind of boring to a lot of people. You know, some people I've noticed uh, pretty much just watch my channel for the guitar demonstrations. I know that's kind of weird to say because I'm just not that great of a guitar player. But uh, people seem to enjoy that. So, you know, you want to give your, uh, you want to give your people what they want. All right, guys. Okay, I think uh, we, we're getting her down pretty good here. Putting a little extra on today. Really trying to get this guy uh, nice and oiled up. Yeah, I think when I first built my first guitar, the, the SG kit guitar that I built, I must have put 60 coats of oil on that dang thing. But you know, it was a lot of fun. And it turned out pretty darn nice. Now like this one, this one's gonna have the same basic uh, finish on it when it's done. In, in other words, it'll have a uh, It'll have some grain shown in it. And that I don't mind at all. And what you're supposed to do is get this on here nice and thick without it spilling over or dripping around. And then you're supposed to leave it alone for a while then kind of come back and make sure you get any excess off. So anyways guys, that's kind of what's going on today. Once again, I love you all for watching my videos. Thanks so much. Uh, thank you to my new subscribers. If you guys want to leave comments and tell me, well, you know, this is what we want to see more of, I'd be very open to that. I love it. Anyways, guys, in closing, I'd like to say that don't forget to pray for your country. Whatever country it is, pray for it. Pray for peace, happiness, joy, all those good things. Don't forget to pray for the world, a world in upheaval. If you've got eyes to see and ears to hear, you know that the world is in upheaval. There's people wanting things that don't belong to them. There's people wanting to take over other countries. It's crazy out there. People lobbing missiles and stuff all over the place. Anyways, guys, we our thoughts and prayers need to go to the Father uh, to help us resolve all these things. And. To me, most importantly, don't forget to pray for your friends, your loved ones, your neighbors that need medical attention. 
There's millions of them out there. And our thoughts and prayers, and once again, need to go to the Father to help these people get on the road to recovery. Once again, I love you all for watching my videos. Thank you so much. I'll be doing some more stuff real soon, and we'll see how this guy turns out. I will see you later in the next video. Bye-bye.